to look at what we um, what we did last time. Um, we're going to talk about then a handful of things, um, and I'm just going to jot down the things that we're going to cover next, and we may cover them in a little bit different order, but um, these are the next few things we're going to cover. All right. First of all, we're going to cover what are called some basic structural tags. Second thing we're going to do is cover maybe one or two other kinds of links. Third thing we're going to do is we're going to look at some text formatting. With this, I usually cover a couple examples and then direct you to read it in the book because it's pretty straightforward. You can read it and just bring any questions that you have to class. There's really, I don't have anything to add to what the book has to say. So we'll go over a couple things and we'll talk about the reason for it and um, then you can read uh, more details in the book. Uh, again, I don't feel obligated to cover the book word for word because you have the book and you can read it. Um, the idea is, uh, my idea is that by combining what I talk about and what the book talks about, you get a better picture of the, the, the topic than if you just read the book or just listened to me. Next thing we're going to look at would be images. And then the last thing we're going to do, not the last thing we're going to do, the, the last of the next bunch of things that we're going to do, if that makes sense, will be start looking at CSS. And CSS is the way that we can make our web pages look different um, than, they, than they look by default. Um, the first few weeks of class, everyone's web pages look identical for the most part because all we've learned in class is HTML. So you can do certain things with HTML. And it works, it's functional, but as we all know, having uh, some sort of visual appeal is important on the web for a number of reasons. Um, and it goes beyond just making the page look nice. Um, by using color, by using different sizes and styles of fonts, you can actually help direct the user to um, get your message um, in a better way than just having a plain black text on a white background. You can actually emphasize things. You can show sections of your page that are different. And you really help the user visually organize the page by, by changing the appearance of it. So, We'll talk about all those things. The first thing we're going to talk about is the structural tags, though. And these were new to HTML5. So if some of you have done web development before but did not do HTML5, these will be new for you. And if you've done web development before but have not done HTML5, these are all simply more specialized versions of the div tag. Um, in HTML4 and earlier, the div tag was used a lot. It was used to designate certain portions of the page. Well now we have more specialized versions of them. So the one div tag was replaced by a bunch of other tags that are more specific. So we'll look at that. First thing I want to do though is I want to download our El Nino page that we worked on last time. And it is posted up in week two. So I can click on it and download it. Remember, when I open it up, it is a zip file. How do I know it's a zip file? Well, I see the .zip extension here. All right. And I notice that when I open up the file, it says extract all files. That's important to do that. Um, I've had a number of people asking the question, like, how do I turn stuff in, and, and so on and so forth. Um, for the first assignment or two, <coughs> where you're only dealing with one file, um, you can turn it in or you can turn it in a zip file. It really doesn't matter that much. But for subsequent assignments, the best thing for you to do is put everything in a folder. So make a Lab 1 folder. Save all your work in that Lab 1 folder. And then when you're done, compress the Lab 1 folder and send me the zip file for that. Uh, and when I say everything, I mean everything. If you point to images on the web, put the images in there. Um, or if you've gotten an image that you've put on your page, Put the image in there. Put the CSS file in there. All the stuff that you have associated with it. All your pages. 
put it in so I can just download one folder and away I go. But again, I can't work with these files within the zip file. I have to extract them. So I'm going to click extract and it's going to ask me where I want to put them and it's going to put them in a folder called Mike on my desktop. And there we go. Here it is on my folder on my desktop. Notice it's not showing me as an HTML file, but it is showing the little Internet Explorer icon, which is good. All right? That means that it was saved as an HTML document. Now, what I think is very useful to do is go up here under Folder and Search Options, View, and click off the Hide Extensions for Known Files. Then we see the full name of it is El Nino.html. All right, that's important to do because when you make links, when you use images, when you point to other files that you have as part of your website, it's important that you have the exact name of it. And remember, a file name consists of two parts. It consists of the um, file name itself, then it consists of an extension that defines what sort of file it is. Now, one thing, Right now, we're going to keep in everything in the same folder, which means that if we refer to another file, we just give the name of the file. So, sometimes I'll get people turn something in where it will say C colon backslash Windows slash desktop slash P slash. Don't do that. Just have the name of the file in there. All right? So, for example, let's open up this, and I'm going to open it up by going into Notepad. I'm going to go to File, Open. I need to switch from Text Files to All Files, and I can click on that and open it. So, notice down here where it says my link to my mic page, all I have is href equals mic.html. I don't have c colon slash windows slash user slash desktop, whatever the path of that is. I just have the file name and I can do that if it's in the same folder. Later on in the semester, we'll talk about what if it's in a different folder and we'll show how to designate that. But for now, let's just keep it simple and put everything in the same folder. All right, basic structural tags. If you notice, if you go to websites, most websites have certain patterns to them, right? There's sort of a header or a banner that shows you what the website's for. There's a navigation. There's different s sections or articles within the body, maybe. And then finally, at the very bottom, usually, I said at the very bottom, oh, this is one of those infinite scrolling pages. I don't know how I feel about those. Let's go to one that I know doesn't do this. Go to Cleveland State's web page. All right, there's a banner. That tells me what the page is. So at a glance, I don't have to guess what this page is. It's Cleveland State University. There's navigation up here. It's a set of links that I can go to. There's some art. Here is an article about student success, about engineering, news, and science. And then finally, here we go, there's a footer at the bottom of the page. And that footer can contain things like other links. I hesitate to say less important links, but they're not necessarily the main navigation. All right. And then it contains things like a copyright notice, the address of the school, and other links. Here's the social network things and all that. So it's stuff that people might want to get to, but maybe are less critical. So you put them on the bottom. And that's pretty consistent. And many sites fit that pattern because it's a good way to organize a page, right? 
most web, you know, just about all websites are going to have a navigation. Right? It's a rare website that only has one single page that you don't have to link to. So you're going to have a navigation section of your page. You're going to have a header section that identifies and someone press the button. Um. So just press it again. There you go. Yeah. Uh, the idea is, is, is uh, and, and most people don't do this, but when you ask a question, you, you can press the button and then the microphone goes on you're on camera and the people at home then can hear you. Most people don't do that. Yes? Uh, uh, I've been told that again. There's, uh, unfortunately, if they don't notice that up in the control room, there's nothing I can do after the fact. So I do apologize for that. Good. All right. Thank you. All right. So the bottom line is there's a certain organization for web pages that's pretty common. Banner or header, um, then articles, then navigation, then footers. And those can be laid out differently, but if you go to almost any site, you're going to see them. You know, let's go to our website. We have a banner. Let's go to one of let's go to one of these pages. We actually have two navigations. We have a navigation on the top, and then we have a navigation on the side. But we still have a banner. We have two navigations. We have our sort of main article, and we have a footer. Then we have some related articles, all right, that are related to the main article, but maybe are secondary a bit. All right, so that's very common. There are tags in HTML5 for each of these, all right? And let's go over what those tags are, and I hope I remember them all. And if I don't, that's why you have a book, all right? The main structural tags are header, footer. Nav, article, section, aside. I think that's all of them. Might be one more, but I don't remember it. If it is, you can see it in your book. So most of these are obvious. There's, I would say that only the bottom three are a little confusing of what they represent. The header is sort of the identifying information on the top of the page. Within the header section, you should make it clear what the web page is and what the purpose of the web page is. So that's in the header section. In the footer are sort of things that you want to appear on the bottom of the page. It's stuff that is necessary, but not necessarily critical or terribly important in all cases. In other words, it's something that you want on the page, but you don't necessarily want to put it in people's faces. All right? The nav is the navigation. So that's the links to the other pages on the site. Or it can be linked to, li it can be um, links to other sections of the page. You could call that the navigation too. An article would be like an article you would find in a news magazine, right? It's a, it's, it's a section about some topic. Articles and sections, in a way, can be used interchangeably. I would put an article, I would define an article as something that's like a news article where a section might be something that's less of a news article and more just um, a dump of information. Give you an example. If we had, a, if we had on Elsie's website a faculty biography 
section uh, of pages. All right. A little, a couple paragraphs that, that explain my background. I would say that would be an article. All right, because it's it's like a news article. So like if someone wrote a news article about me, they'd say you know where I went to school, what my degrees in, how long I've been at LC. Here's here's the kinds of courses he teaches. Here's the things that he's interested in, and so on. All right. So that would be in an article. If I had something like a list of my office hours, you don't think of that really as a story or an article, but it's a definitely a, a distinct section, all right, from the rest of the stuff on the page. There's a section about my office hours. I would use a section tag for that, all right? Don't spend too long worrying about this. Don't sit there at home, you know, wringing your brow and should this be an article or should this be a section? It's a judgment call. Just pick one. All right. It's probably a good idea if you're consistent about it. So, like, if you're going to use the article tag for your main sections of the page, continue to use that on, on every page. If you decide the section is better, then use the section. It's not, again, that critical which you, which you pick. An aside is like, an, is like a sidebar that's, rema that's related to the main article. So, sort of like this. Again, if we go to LC's page, and we click over here to choosing a career or major, here's an article about choosing a career or major. This, I would say, you would put in the, an aside. It's like, like, you know, you've seen in magazines, there might be an article about the Super Bowl, all right? Then there might be an aside that talks about one player that got injured and whether he'll be ready for the Super Bowl or not. It's related to the main article, but it's separate from the main article. So it's like a sidebar. All right. So that kind of stuff you put in the um, aside tag. So stuff that's related to it, but not the article itself is an aside. All right. So let's look at our... El Nino page and decide how we want to divide it. Thank you. All right, this one almost answers itself, right? What would the header of the page be? Well, what identifies the page and tells you what it's about? This, all right? Now, I might include to that, like, I just wrote a page about El Nino. You know, maybe this would be LCCC's meteorology program talking about El Nino. So maybe I would have other information in the header as well. And we can go and change that in a minute. What's this? Well, that's navigation, right? That's how to navigate around through this page. Now, in this case, the navigation doesn't take me to a separate page. It takes me within the page. This would be an article about El Nino. All right, so I would put this in an article tag. And finally, this stuff I would put, oops, this stuff I would put in a footer tag. We don't really have any asides in this. And if you said you'd rather use a section tag instead of a article tag, I'm fine with that. The one thing I would not suggest doing would be if, uh, again, this is addressed mainly to people who've done web development before, I would not put all these things in div tags. All right? Because these HTML, these new HTML5 uh, tags are more precise. They more precisely explain the purpose of the section. And again, your job in HTML is to mark up your stuff. That is, to explain the meaning. So in other words, this section of code, what does it represent? Oh, it's the navigation. This section of code, what does it represent? Oh, it's the header. It's the footer, and so on. A div tag merely said that, well, this is a division. This is a section of my page. Now, if you don't know what a div tag is, 
then just mentally rewind for two minutes and just forget everything I said. All right, because it's not important. If you're learning this for the first time, then don't worry about that. But I do know some people have done some web development before, and therefore I want to make sure it's clear why this is a better way than just using div tags. So how do these work? Really simple. I'm going to go and I'm going to put this in a header tag. In fact, I'm going to do what I suggested just to make my header tag more interesting. And I'm going to say I'll keep this as an H1 tag. Because this is the top importance of this. I think that's spelled right. If not, we would need to look it up before we publish this. All right, so that's my header. That identifies what the page is and what the purpose of the page is. And it's important to do that, even if you think it's obvious. All right? Have you ever gone to a web page and gotten annoyed because it was too easy for you to figure out what the purpose of the page was? Not likely. If anything, the opposite is true. On occasion, you stumble across a page and you look and say, what was this page for? All right, and it might be puzzling. This is a navigation. This is how we get around this page. This is my article. And finally, this is my footer. All right. Now, yes. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I, I could a good eye. So, all I've done essentially is wrap what was already there in these tags. Now, watch for the dramatic difference in the look of the page. Doesn't look anything different. All right, other than the fact that I added that H1 on the top. Why do it then if it doesn't make it look different? Well, a couple reasons. One of the reasons is the better than that we can describe our web page in HTML and what the content means, the better that programs that use this web page can understand it. And that includes things such as search engines that go through and look at the page and if you use these tags and you well define these tags, then the search engine has a better chance, I would think. And the search engine at least potentially has a better chance of indexing your page correctly. All right. Second thing is, is we can later on, we can style our page based on these tags. So we can make the nav section one color, we can make the header section a different color, and we can make the footer another color still. All right. What's the reason for that? Well, again, it simply helps the user visually organize the page and understand the content of it at a glance. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So again, like if I had, if there was a page about me um, and I wanted to put my biography 
in a article and my office hours in a section, I could have a header that explained what the page was about. I could have a section that defined my office hours. And then I could have an article that was my biography. So absolutely, if that's what your question was. And not a problem at all. So again, even though right now it doesn't matter until we get into CSS, it's not going to give you a visual difference in your page. It's a good habit to get into of starting to put this stuff in there. All right? And therefore, every example I go in from now on, I'll include these. These might not be, you know, consider these to be pretty much as necessary as the HTML head body tags. In other words, you probably want them on every single page. Now, one thing that I acknowledge and keep in mind, I didn't make this up. I'm just a messenger. All right. It is a little confusing that you have something called a header and then something called a head. All right? But just remember that the head and body are the two main sections of the page and the header is a portion of the body. We also then, to confuse it even further, have headings, which are like your H1s through H6s. All right. Questions about this? All right. We've talked about links, and we've talked about two kinds of links. No, three kinds of links so far. One link that we looked at is what's called an internal link, and that's where you have a link to a specific portion of the page. Now, all the links that we've looked at so far look the same, basically. We have a, that means it's a link. We have a space. Then we have href equals. And then we have something within quotes. Then we have the text that the user will click on. And then we have our end link tag. So the question really is, is what can that href be? All right. So far we've seen three possibilities. That href could be a section of a page. It could be a page on someone else's website. Or it could be another page on our website. So those are the three links that we have done so far. Three kinds of links that we've done so far. There's at least a couple more that we'll talk about uh, today. All right. Here's examples of those. This is a link to a section of my page. How do I know that? Because it starts out with a pound sign. So, pound sign definition means go to the thing on the page that has an ID of definition, which is this section right here. Pound history means go to the uh, section of the page that has an ID of history. Pound sign credit means go to the portion of the page that has an ID of credits. Just a plain old pound sign means go to the top of the page. In the case of these other things with definition, history, and credits, I can manually put in an ID to say, what do I mean by the definition section? What do I mean by the history section? The top simply the pound for free. All right? I don't designate anything as meaning the pound sign. Pound sign automatically is understood to mean the top of the page. So, I'm in my navigation here. And I click definition, it jumps to that section. I can go back to top, history, back to top, credits, back to top. So these are internal links. That is, they're within the same page. If I pages, like I the footer, or I mic.html, HTTP or HTTPS in front of it. If you just start with the name of the file, that means that it's one of my pages 
and it's going to be in the same folder. All right. Again, we'll make that assumption for now. Later on, we'll talk about if it's in a different folder. So now, and if I let me know, file is. So if I, that takes me to a separate page. It's not a web server. P or HTTPS. Then to an external page. All right, someone else's web page that, just, that happens to be out on the internet. And I can do that simply by putting in href equals HTTPS. So, all right. An email link. All right. any good. Just able to call them.
All right. <coughs> I guess our mic went out, so now it's back. I can emphasize something with the EM tag, which wraps around the text that I want to emphasize. And I can strongly emphasize it by putting it within a strong tag. And by default, emphasize will be italics, strong emphasis will be bold. Now, strong and M and A are three tags that we've seen that are different than all the others. What are different, what is different between the strong EM and A tag? How are they different than all the other tags that we've seen? Yeah. They go, um, they go right in the middle of the paragraph. They don't cause a separate paragraph. In more precise terms, those are what are called inline tags. The other kinds of tags we looked at are block tags. So in other words, and we'll all the kinds of tags that we ever deal with. All the tags we deal with are either going to be block or inline tags. So, for example, if I have a paragraph, and another paragraph, the brown is going to show ABC and underneath it DEF. Because this creates a, starts the tag on the next line, the fact that the paragraph is a block tag. So block tags drop down the line and then start displaying their stuff. Again, this is a default behavior. We'll learn how to change all of this via CSS. But by default, if you don't specify otherwise, a block tag will drop down below before it starts. An inline tag, however, isn't like And again, it doesn't written out. What matters is the type of tag. So if I had something like that, I would get ABC. EM is not a block tag, it's an inline tag. Therefore, it would appear right next to ABC. But by would be in italics. And then GHI would appear right after it. So all the tags that we look at will either be block or inline. All right? And the three that we've looked so far at that are inline are A tag for links, M for emphasis, and strong for strongly emphasis. All right. Now, all the other text formatting will be in line as well, for the most part. It's, it's almost impossible for me to say something is true all the time, because any time I start to make a statement, I realize that there's exceptions to it. So a lot of the text formatting is, um, um, is going to be in line. Um, <coughs> There's subscripts and superscripts. All right, a subscript is where the word drop or where the letters drop down a little bit, and a superscript is where the letters are up a little bit. All right, an example of that would be like in mathematical equa equations. You know, if you want to say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If I simply said A2 plus B2 equals C2, it would all appear on one line. But if I put these in a superscript tag, then it will appear that way. 
Let's just do that for the heck of it, even though it's not really relevant to El Nino. So there we see a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Likewise, the, the subscript would be useful if we were doing like, if I wanted to show H2O. All right, we show it like that. There's a whole bunch of other formatting. Um, you can read about it in the book. The other good resource for this is a website called W3Schools. This is a great beginner's website. And if we look at... HTML It's a good website that's annoying the heck out of me right at this moment. Maybe I want HTML reference. Yeah, that's what I want. Oh, you know what's happening? I'll I'll bet my last dollar and I'm not that far off from it that this is such an old version of the browser that it's getting confused. Yep. I bring up a newer browser and it does that. Very very tricky. Um, if I go under HTML formatting, it shows me a whole bunch of things that we can do. And we went over just a couple of them. We went over bold, emphasized, subscripts, and superscripts. But there's a lot more as well. And actually... If you look in the book, you can see even more stuff because I don't think this section covers HTML5 stuff. But you can see that uh, when you review in the book. So I'm not going to go over formatting much more. Uh, you can read it and ask questions. Yes? Uh, possible is a big word, right? There's, a, you know, I uh, hate to sound like an old timer, but we put a man on the moon, right? So if we do that, can we do that? Yes, yeah, we probably can. The question is, is the best solution to offer? My guess is, is that it saw the old browser, thought I was on a mobile phone. That's why it gave me a more of a single column layout. So that's probably a faulty assumption. Um, there are things that you can do to make your 
pages more cross-browser compatible is the short answer. The long answer would take me at least until March probably to, to explain in details, all right? So uh, as the course goes on, we'll learn some of the tricks that you can do to make it behave more in a cross-browser compatible way. But then, for example, the mobile web development class covers a lot of that kind of stuff as well. I probably won't go over much more of the text formatting bit. Read that in the book and use it where you need it. Uh, next week, starting on Tuesday, we'll look at images. And we will look at, um, we'll start looking at CSS. All right. Okay, we'll see you up in lab.